Thank you. Uh, thank you, Under Secretary General DiCarlo, for your briefing. Colleagues, a few things are true and straightforward. First, and I want to be very clear about this, Israel has a right to defend itself against attacks from Hezbollah and other terrorists. That is precisely what it did on July 30, when it independently responded to Hezbollah's July 28 attack on Majd al-Shams, which killed 12 children. I also want to note that the United States was not involved with Israel's response on July 30 in Lebanon. That said, there is no doubt, absolutely none, that Hezbollah was responsible for this attack, which used an Iranian weapon and was launched from a portion of Lebanon controlled by Hezbollah. Indeed, Hezbollah has repeatedly fired rockets at Israel since October 8, with Iran's support and backing flouting Security Council Resolution 1701. Hezbollah's attacks have displaced more than 100,000 civilians, and no member of this council should or would tolerate attacks such as these. Therefore, we call on the Security Council to send an unambiguous message to Hezbollah by standing with Israel as it defends itself against Hezbollah's repeated attacks. Second, Hezbollah is not the only Iranian-backed group in the region that has taken advantage of the situation in Gaza to undermine regional peace and security. The Houthis are brazenly violating international law with their attacks on commercial and merchant vessels in the Red Sea, attacks that have affected all of us. Iran's support for the Houthis clearly violates the arms embargo in Resolution 2216, and these attacks flagrantly disregard Resolution 2722. Iran's arming of terrorist groups in Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq is similarly destabilizing and contrary to efforts by the Security Council to de-escalate regional tensions. Colleagues, Iran must abide by the Council's resolutions. And failing that, the Security Council must consider additional measures to enforce its resolutions to hold Iran accountable and address repeated actions by its terrorist proxies and partners that threaten regional peace and security. Third, the United States was not aware of or involved in the apparent death of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. Indeed, we have no independent confirmation as to Hamas's claims regarding his death. Fourth, and as Secretary Blinken noted earlier today, it is best not to speculate on the impact that recent events may have on peace and security in the Middle East. A broader war is neither imminent nor inevitable, although the opportunistic attacks by Iran and its network of terrorist proxies and partners across the region have repeatedly brought us closer to a regional conflict. For our part, the United States will continue to lead the way in diplomatic efforts to end the war in Gaza and reduce regional tensions. We will continue to work hard to prevent a broader regional war. That starts, as Secretary Blinken reaffirmed today, with finalizing an agreement for an immediate ceasefire with the release of hostages in Gaza, as called for in Resolution 2735. A ceasefire agreement is the surest way to alleviate the suffering of the Palestinian people and unlock the possibility of broader stability. And so, the United States will continue to work in partnership with Egypt, Qatar, and other regional partners to seek to deliver an agreement. We have also made clear to all the parties that we want to avoid an escalation of fighting along the blue line between Israel and Lebanon. We remain committed to a diplomatic outcome to restore calm along the blue line that would allow citizens on both sides to safely return to their homes. Again, we believe that there is still time and space for a diplomatic solution. We encourage members of this Council, with direct influence over Iran, to increase pressure on it to stop escalating its proxy conflict against Israel and other actors. Indeed, every member of this Council should call on Iran to stop arming, advising, and financing terrorist groups, and to rein in the actions of proxies and partners who threaten regional peace and security. In this dangerous moment, it is imperative 
that we work together to reduce tensions in the region. Rest assured, the United States will continue to do our part and appreciates the efforts of other nations who share our commitment to support lasting regional peace. Thank you. Спасибо. Thank you.